In the year 2157, humanity has achieved significant progress in education, leading to the elimination of wars, hunger, and terrorism. The Earth's environment has recovered and medical advancements have made it possible to combat any disease. Space travel has become commonplace with Max navigating the universe in his own spaceship. However, he avoids contact with his family, who urge him to return to college. Suddenly, an asteroid collides with Max's ship, causing severe damage and forcing him to make an emergency landing on a nearby planet. Stranded on this unfamiliar planet, Max discovers signs of civilization, encountering a creature and attempting to communicate with it. Before he can succeed, a soldier named Zeep intervenes, pointing a gun at Max and speaking a language he doesn't understand. Max uses a translation device, but Zeep shoots at his belt, causing Max to lose it and get arrested. Max is taken to a grim town resembling a historical version of Earth, where he is subjected to interrogation by scientists who doubt his alien origins. Despite their skepticism, Max is scheduled to be transferred to a mental hospital in the capital, accompanied by Zeep. Meanwhile, Funk, another government employee, intervenes to rescue Max from dangerous experimentation. Simultaneously, Funk is driving Max away in his car but encounters a blocked road, prompting him to search for an alternate route. As he navigates, he becomes increasingly anxious, noticing the time and suddenly experiences a seizure just as authorities approach to apprehend him. Amidst the chaos, locals vocally support the government while criticizing Max for not joining in, labeling him a degenerate. Seizing the opportunity, Max swiftly escapes. In the government building, it is revealed that the country is under a dictatorship controlled by the enigmatic fathers, including Strider and Omnic. The fathers exhibit ruthless behavior, swiftly eliminating any member who errs. After wandering through the city, Max finds himself in a bar where he meets R, a waitress, and quickly becomes enamored with her. When another patron becomes aggressive towards R, Max intervenes, disarming the man and defending her honor. Impressed by Max's actions, R invites him to stay at her home, revealing herself to be Guy's sister. As Max spends more time in the city, he learns about the local culture, including their belief that they inhabit the interior of a planet. With no knowledge of other planets or stars, the government portrays Max's thoughts on television as if they were a movie. According to history, the fathers stopped a rebellion known as the Degenerates using the towers, portraying them as saviors of the country. Guy enthusiastically invites Max to join the guards, but Max lacks identification and documentation. Guy persuades Commander Chachu to allow Max to join, but Max must undergo rigorous training. During training, Max excels, but his willingness to help a struggling comrade draws private admonishment from Guy, emphasizing the need for discipline according to their superior standards. At home, Max undergoes rigorous physical training while Guy quizzes him on the rule book to assess his memory. They occasionally engage in sparring sessions. In his leisure time, Max spends time with Rada, and their relationship progresses to a kiss. Once accepted into the army, Max participates in his first raid in rebel territory. The soldiers exhibit extreme brutality using bombs and violence against what Max discovers are merely frightened civilians. Disturbed by the reality of the situation, Max drops his weapon, prompting Chachu to criticize him. A rebel briefly retaliates before being subdued, and Chachu callously mistreats him. Max observes the ruthless arrest of numerous civilians, leading to a conversation with Chachu about the rebels. Max explains his confusion, having expected wild beasts rather than ordinary citizens. Chachu insults the rebels but acknowledges their capacity for pain, whereas Max reveals he doesn't experience pain himself. The fathers preside over the rebels' trial, subjecting them to intense lights. Some prisoners deny involvement while others confront the fathers, leading to varying sentences ranging from forced labor to execution. One rebel, punished for his defiance, is subjected to a painful, gas-filled suit witnessed by Max who struggles to conceal his horror. Later, Max attempts to express his moral objections to Guy, who staunchly defends the government's actions. Despite his public persona, Max grapples with the ethical dilemmas he encounters. Funk finally locates Max's whereabouts. However, by the time he arrives, Max and Guy have been summoned to Chachu's office. Chachu, seeking to test Max's loyalty after the earlier incident, takes him to the forest and orders him to execute two rebels with death sentences. Instead, Max chooses to release the rebels, leading to a confrontation with Chachu where he declares his resignation. Ignoring Guy's pleas for mercy, Chachu fatally shoots Max and drags Guy back to the capital, leaving Max's body in the forest. Meanwhile, the fathers discuss tactics to quell the rebel attacks, with Eunuch suggesting the formation of a massive army. They contemplate orchestrating a fake assassination attempt to rally public support for war. In the forest, the rebels are astonished to find Max alive as his body heals rapidly due to Earth's advanced health technology. Max reveals his resilience to fatal wounds but can be stopped only by a shot to the head. 
The rebels disclose that the fathers are dictators who use the towers to brainwash the population, inciting patriotic fervor. Some individuals are immune to the brainwashing and suffer seizures instead, branded as degenerates by the government. As the towers emit their brainwashing waves, the rebels use sticks to prevent choking during seizures. Similarly, Almic privately copes with the waves due to his earthland physiology. Subsequently, Max and the rebels breach the tower territory, engaging in a firefight with soldiers. Max, displaying his resourcefulness, plants bombs under the tower before escaping, using ropes to drag out any surviving rebels. With Max's strength, the group manages to flee into the forest just before the tower is destroyed in the explosion. Unfortunately, one more rebel succumbs to injuries, leaving only Max and one other survivor. In the aftermath, Max returns to the city and reunites with Rada, but their reunion is short-lived as authorities arrive, prompting Max to confront them to protect Rada and Guy. Despite his swift and efficient combat skills, Max is ultimately forced to surrender when Chachu threatens Rada's safety. Subsequently, Max finds himself imprisoned alongside other detainees, including Zeep and the man with the metal arm. Meanwhile, Strike visits Omnic to negotiate Max's release, leading to a tense exchange where Omnic subtly torments his guest. However, upon learning of Max's unique trait of immunity to seizures, Omnic decides to exploit this power for himself. Omnic orders his subordinate to stage Max's disappearance, making it appear as though he vanished mysteriously, while also misleading Strike about Max's fate. In the morning, the prisoners are tasked with cleaning the forest, collecting every weapon left from the war. While doing so, Max's group encounters a swarm of defense robots. They swiftly take cover, returning fire when the opportunity arises, gradually neutralizing the robots. With the threat eliminated, the group continues their search. During their exploration, Z enlightens Max about the dangerous mutated humans lurking in the area, emphasizing the need for preemptive action to avoid being targeted. While traversing the terrain, Zev stumbles into a concealed pit, prompting Max to leap into assist. Together, they uncover a network of underground tunnels, leading them to an abandoned facility. Upon activating the power, they uncover old equipment but are interrupted by the presence of a lurking beast. As the beast sabotages the equipment, cutting off the power supply, it launches a vicious attack, trapping Zeph in a deadly grip. Max, however, intervenes, engaging in a fierce hand-to-hand -hand struggle to save Zeph from the creature's clutches, eventually overpowering it and rescuing his comrade. During Zep's slumber, Max releases the beast, much to Zep's disapproval. Max asserts that these beings aren't mere animals. The following day, Max, Zeph, and the man with the metal arm continue their exploration. Among the trees, they encounter a red tank ensnared in vines. As they approach, they're ambushed by a black tank. Firing back proves futile until Max devises a plan to manipulate the red tank, causing it to inadvertently destroy the black tank. Max then infiltrates the disabled tank, disabling it further. After sharing a meal, Max declares his intention to escape despite the border's security measures. Utilizing the tank, he heads southward, navigating past hidden mines unscathed. Concealed within the tank, Max eludes detection until a soldier hops on board, prompting Max to swiftly incapacitate him. Breaking through the gate and ignoring the feudal gunfire, Max continues his journey into unknown territory. Guy, fearful of the consequences, attempts to flee but is restrained by Max, who assures him of a better life ahead. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.